So what exactly is quorum sensing? Well, let's look at an example. Suppose we have a bacteria in a host organism whose entire purpose is to infect the host by releasing a specific toxin. If the bacteria were to release it on its own without any backup, that bacteria would be annihilated. How? By the immune system of the host, of course. That bacteria is dead. Alright, so how can the bacteria infect a host without being noticed and rejected by the host's immune system? That's where quorum sensing comes in. By definition, quorum sensing is the regulation of gene expression in response to fluctuations in cell population density. That's a lot of big words, so let's explore exactly what this means. Let's start with the word itself, quorum sensing. The word quorum is a Latin word meaning the minimum number of members of an assembly or society that must be present at any of its meetings to make the proceedings of that meeting valid. In other words, the quorum is the minimum population required in order to effectively carry out a process. This is no different in the context of quorum sensing as bacteria must reach a certain population in order to effectively infect a host. But how do bacteria determine the population density of surrounding bacteria? They can't literally speak because they're bacteria. So in a sense, quorum sensing is the process bacteria use to communicate in order to reach the quorum. A signaling molecule, we'll call them autoinducers, is produced by the bacteria, which is then released into the surrounding area. The autoinducers bind to the receptors of other bacteria cells, which in turn produce more signaling molecules. The more bacteria there are, the more autoinducers are produced, and the more receptors on a bacteria are filled. After the autoinducers bind to the receptors, a chain of events follows in order to create more autoinducers. Once a certain number of receptors is filled, the bacteria respond at about the same time. Quorum sensing varies in different types of bacteria, and not all bacteria can carry out the process. The ones that can are divided into two main groups, gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. In a nutshell, the difference between gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria is that gram-negative bacteria have an outer cellular membrane, whereas gram-positive bacteria don't. For the purpose of this video, we will be focusing on the quorum sensing process in gram-positive bacteria. The process can be split into four steps, production, reception, transduction, and response. We will start with production. In order to produce the autoinducers we talked about earlier, gram-positive bacteria use chopped up pieces of oligopeptides, typically around 10 to 20 amino acids long, as signaling molecules, which are also known as autoinducing peptides, or more commonly, AIPs. The AIPs are sent outside the cell through a transport protein, AGRB, located on the membrane of the cell. The AIP then begins its journey to find a receptor to bind to. Good luck, little autoinducer. Reception begins once our AIP friend reaches a receptor on a bacterial cell. Essentially, the AIP binds to a membrane-bound receptor called the accessory gene regulator cognate receptor. But that's really annoying to say more than once, so we're just going to call this receptor the AGRC receptor. Yep, that's much better. After reception occurs, we move on to transduction. We can look at transduction as a sort of really tiny biological relay race. It consists of the processes that are activated by the binding of the little AIP to the AGRC receptor. When the AIP binds to the receptor, the receptor is phosphorylated on the side that's inside of the cell. The AGRC in turn phosphorylates something called AGRA, a response regulator protein, which then goes on to transcribe the DNA and make all sorts of enzymes and proteins specific to that bacteria. And that is an explanation of what is hands down the coolest relay race ever. Now that transduction is over, let's move on to the next phase of the quorum sensing process. Cellular response. Cellular response is the fourth and final step of bacterial quorum sensing. Cellular response begins the very moment that the AGRA protein begins to transcribe the bacteria's DNA. The AGRA protein begins to create more and more AIPs in a positive feedback loop and releases them on their own independent journeys to find their own AGRC receptors to bind to. And if there are enough AIPs who have found their way to receptors, whatever toxin or other material that the bacteria wanted to produce to infect the host would be produced and released out of the cell. And the great part about that is that since all of the bacteria will probably reach the quorum at about the same time, they will all fire at once against the immune system. Yay for bacteria! Maybe not for us, though. 
The end of the process comes around when something else acts upon the bacteria, such as a receptor inhibitor. The bacteria literally goes on producing AIPs forever. Whatever works, right? Speaking of other things acting upon bacteria, research has uncovered potential applications involving the blocking of receptors with inhibitors or preventing the bacteria from releasing the AIPs in the first place. So the cells are unable to communicate and would be rendered completely useless. An interference of this sort could even result in bacteria cell death. Score for the host, but the bacteria aren't as lucky this time. All in all, quorum sensing is super freaking cool. Bacteria use it to sense how many other bacteria are around it, so that they don't waste any resources on releasing toxins when they are clearly going to be obliterated by the host's immune system. Hopefully this video informs you on the process of quorum sensing. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching! watching.